What is up, everybody? Back with another video. Today, we are talking about what happened between two popular TikTok people, Sienna May and Jack Wright. I believe his name is, right? Uh, right? Jack Emo. Wright. Um, this is a really interesting story. Um, you know, it maybe interesting is not the right word, but uh, allegedly what happened here is that this girl, Sienna May, um, has been essaying her kind of fake boyfriend. They had the kind of like a pseudo relationship online for TikTok, uh, Jack Wright. And I remember when this story broke, there was a video that one of his friends put online being like, yo, this kind of stuff she's doing to him is not okay. And what it, it, it showed a kind of blackout uh, Jack Wright and Sienna May on top of him, touching him in, in, play, in uh, you know, the nethers, kissing up on him and all kinds of stuff. But he was blackout, right? And so um, it looked, I remember that video, it looked quite bad to me, you know. Uh, but it kind of turned into like she defended herself and Jack, the fellow here in the video, never spoke on it, actually. Uh, he never said anything publicly. So it kind of just died down. And a lot of people continued to be friends with Sienna and collaborate with her. Uh, Dave Porkboy, you know, enemy of the show was speaking highly of her, saying that people were just trying to cancel her and stuff. And maybe that's understandable to an extent because I don't know how much people on the internet thought they were actually dating, right? Uh, obviously, no means no, no matter if you're dating or not. But the but but regardless, okay, um, Jack finally released a video about it and explaining in, in kind of great detail what happened between them and how it affected him. The reason I'm actually talking about it is that I find it's really interesting. You know, <clears throat> we've come a long way when it comes to uh, women survivors of SA. They tend to get a lot of respect, and you hear stuff like Believe All Women, stuff like that, right? But um, there's still a lot of stigma around uh, men survivors um what they go through and you know it is kind of an interesting phenomenon in that like obviously being a survivor is traumatic and horrible by itself being a man um i don't want to say it's I, I, who can say which is worse you know that's like a ridiculous premise but Men have their own complications, let's say, with it, in that it's people don't understand what it is like as a man to be essayed, and people don't understand how it happens. I'll, you know, there's a lot of things are like, oh, come on, dude, that's awesome, don't complain. You know, there's a lot of that, and you see that even, you even see that when it comes to teachers that, you know, had inappropriate relations with their students, and I'm talking maybe like 13, 14, 15, and the headline and the joke was always like, oh, sick, dude, I would be, I would kill to be that kid when I was that age, you know, and, uh, well, obviously, you know, in truth, it's just as damaging and it's just as traumatic for men as it is for women or boys or girls. Um, so it is a kind of an interesting, this is a very specific, very interesting, very public case of the man who's on the receiving end of the, of the essay and kind of listening to him explain how hard it's been as a man to cope with being able to talk about having people understand what he's going through. So I want to watch this video with you guys comment there is something i do want to say right out the bat is that both of these individuals involved in this are 18 okay so i mean these are young young 
people. These are young people. Um, so let's just consider that, okay, as we watch this. These are not, f I, I, you know, let's just take that into consideration before passing judgment on any of these people, not defending anybody or anything, but, you know, these, these are 18-year-olds, okay? So just want to put that out there. They're not 30. They're not 40, right? Okay, all right, let's, let's take a look. What, what does Jack Wright have to say about this? I just want to clarify that we both knew that we were just friends. She was seeing and talking to other guys in LA all the time. And I, I just thought of her as a good friend. We were making videos, we were making dance trends, we had fun. It was just strictly friends and we both knew that. At this point, nothing inappropriate was happening between us. We were just friends, everything was fine. This next part of the video is very difficult for me to talk about. I've been wanting to talk about it for a long time. So the first incident where Sienna crossed boundaries, it was after filming, we went to the room. Um, I was just chilling on my phone on the bed and she got naked, like completely naked, nothing on, and straddled me when I was literally just chilling on the bed. But I didn't know what to do in like the situation because it was just, like random and weird. Quickly told her, Sienna, get off, we're just friends, stop trying to make out with me you're like just doing a bunch of things to me and i was i kept on saying sienna stop get off i, I like i didn't want to like be like aggressive i didn't want to hurt her you know so i i pulled her off of me and it took like a couple of tries because i don't want to be like too rough and i went out of the room and that was like the end of it the next morning where she was like <clears throat> yeah i mean Again, like, <clears throat> as a man, it's hard to talk about that <clears throat> in a way where people can understand that it was actually a traumatic incident, right? And and even to the point where, where he continued to uh, have a relationship with her after that. Because, I mean, obviously you can imagine if the roles, genders were reversed and a dude dropped trow, got fully, you know... <laughs> fully out and climbed on top that would be a that would be a uh, very different situation obviously there's different like i don't know yeah it, it, but but clearly that that's that's wild right like that's that's very bad behavior and um it's it's hard it's so hard to come out and be like yo don't ever talk to me again you know, if if it was reversed, it'd be kind of a police situation, most likely, right? Or just uh, tell everybody to avoid this guy. So, you know, yeah, I can imagine that it that it's just it's weird. It's a weird spot to be in for him. I'm so sorry <laughs> for doing that. That was I I don't know what went through my head. I had to clarify again that I didn't like her that way. We were just friends. She said sorry, that was it. After that, these type of things kept happening. She would do something and I would forgive her and she said it wouldn't happen again and we would go on and making fun videos. After all those type of things kept on happening, the Hawaii incident happened where I was passed out unconscious almost like the whole night. She got on top of me, took advantage of me, groped me. I'm, I'm so glad they pulled her off of me and Honestly, I'm glad that they have evidence. I, yeah, I mean, the fact that his friends were there and thought it was so weird because she's trying to spin it like, oh, we were just hooking up like normal, you know. Uh, his friends thought it was so weird that they thought to get out their cameras and record it. It made them so uncomfortable. So, Yeah, ultimately, we have to try to think we have to hold accountability for for both genders in this situation when it's when it's like someone preying on on another. Right. Like we sh we can't blame him for for what she did. Right. Because it's easy to say he should have uh, 
He should have distanced himself. He should have said no. He should have whatever, told the police. Um, we have to have the same energy, right, for for both genders when they're when they're victimized. It's it's a hard, uh, complex situation for this young man to deal with. After Shanna found out about the video, she said sorry. She said if this got out, she would be done. That it's horrible, and she's working on boundaries, and she was seeking therapy. Um, and shortly after, there was a party. I was taking pictures with a couple other girls. We took a picture. Sienna came in, started screaming at me, got mad at the girls, told me to come to her room to talk to me. She started screaming at me, and I was like, Sienna, there's no reason for you to be mad when you're getting with other guys in LA. I can't just take a simple picture with a couple girls. That's when she pulled me in and grabbed me and tried to make out with me and I got pissed and told her to leave. I wanted to stay at the party and she kinda had already been yelling at every single person in the party. So two friends wanted to take her home and while the car was moving, she jumped out of the car, rolled and said, I have to get back to Jack. So I ran back to the house and I was like hiding from her and I was just waiting for her parents to finally pick her up. Looking back now, I don't know why I stayed friends with her stayed around her. I truly thought she was gonna change for some reason. I feel like she, she'd she say she had so much love for me and that she truly cared for me. And then the next night she would do something like that. She knew I had those boundaries. Yeah, again, it's like he gonna go through the same emotions. He gonna blame himself that he should have done something. Um, Yeah, it's not his fault. I mean, he, he, he got essayed, you know, that's just what it is. It's, it sucks. You can see it really affect him too. And, and a lot of people, it's got to be hard when there's a lot of people in mainstream, you know, influencer culture who are saying they're just trying to cancel her. He's overreacting, you know, they were dating or whatever. Um, you know, that's just as disgusting as as blaming a, a woman who's a victim, which happens a lot too, right? But I would say in Jack's case, because there's always, there's always like people who can wedge doubt in these accusations and be like, oh, well, we don't know for sure, so I'm just going to trust the guy that I like. Um, but in Jack's case, there is extraordinary evidence supporting him. I mean, that video clip alone. Is pretty extraordinary. And a lot of people corroborating his story, too. So when I was at my most, like, vulnerable state, like when I was arguing, getting getting heated, or when I was... Part of me, too, wants to defend her in a way like she's just 18. You know, maybe she, she just needs to see a therapist and... But, but, like, would I have that same energy for a man who did this to a woman? Probably not, you know? I probably wouldn't. So, what is that? It's just weird how we have, I don't know, my own bias, right? Um, I don't know. I don't know what's the appropriate punishment for her. But, like, yeah, I acknowledge I do also have that bias. Asleep or passed out. That's when she would take advantage of me. Because she knew I was at my most vulnerable state. When I'm awake, I hated it. I hated that touch. I hated any intimacy with her because I knew her just... Yeah, I mean, if a dude gropes a blacked out woman, that's just straight up jail, bro. Go to jail. Do not collect the two hundred. Uh, that's just messed up. The same, we don't have that same energy for what happens to a dude. We really don't. friends I didn't want that from her and especially with like the past couple of things she did I wouldn't I didn't want nothing to, I didn't want anything to do with that over the next couple of months I was stuck in this toxic cycle I was stuck with her crying to all my friends saying that I didn't like her back and why don't I like her back and she would get mad at me for not caring about her as much as she she cared about for me but 
she'd also be doing these things to me and would go see other guys in LA. So it was like, couldn't win at all. I couldn't get out of this. She would constantly come to my house, remember my door codes. It, like it got to the point where I had to like start screaming at her to like get out of my house because I was so sick of her just like breaking into my house. I would wake up and see her car just sitting outside at like two in the morning. She would break into my house and when I was sound asleep, she'd come into my room and I'd wake up to her hand in my pants and it wasn't like the only time it happened too. I was so like used to it. I was so used to it that it, I don't know, it was, it was just like normal. That's so crazy, that is intense. I don't know what to say. I mean, that's that's dangerous. That's really aggressive, effed up behavior. That that is straight up. That's just straight up essay. Um, that's horrible. It's crazy that he's been carrying this around for all these years and just kind of keeping it to himself. Wow. For me, that I, like I didn't think there was such like a problem at all. Like part of me wants to blame myself for being nice and sticking around after so many, so many times. But now I realize that I was stuck in this like manipulative cycle of her acting like she extremely cared about me and then that night she would do stuff to me. And it was, it was just so normal for me. I, I got used to it, which sucks. I feel like no one should have to go through. It's where I almost felt like I owed owed it to her for some reason. I don't know why, like I felt like she had this like control, like this power of, over me. It was all, I don't know. I was like, I was like stuck. Um, and I feel like you should never have to like worry about like falling asleep and waking up to one of your good friends like touching you, you know? I was like terrified for some reason, which you shouldn't be from like a, a, a person. One night she started ripping off my Is that male privilege right there uh, peeking out a little bit? I mean, yeah, it is terrifying because she's unhinged. She's unbalanced. She's sneaking in your house. She's obviously a little cuckoo. I mean, you know what I mean? It's terrifying. And actually, in truth, probably women feel that amplified times 100. If there's a creepy guy, it's, it's freaky. It's dangerous. Uh, ooh, dudes have that crazy energy. But, yeah, it's scary. Uh, I don't blame you, dude. My clothes, touching my crotch area, trying to make out with me. I mean, it was just like same old, same old. I, I say, Sienna, stop. Sienna, stop. Go back to the couch. Sienna, stop. So I like locked the door. She was trying to get in, and I literally just slept on the floor. And she finally went to bed. It's like very awkward the next morning, and she'll say sorry, and I'm like, Sienna, this this happens so many times. Like, you do not respect boundaries. You just, <laughs> oh my god. That night we went home, made sure we had like different rooms to stay in. And I got in the shower and she picked the lock of my door. I made sure to lock the doors, but she picked the lock and walked in. I was in the shower. All I heard was just like the door opening. And that's when I was just done. I screamed at her, told her to get out. She started crying. She went and slept in my bed. And I went to my friend's trundle bed. Dude, if this is all true, that that's she needs she needs psychiatric help, man. That's crazy, dude. Uh, that's intense, intense like obsession, stalker, essay behavior. It does a little bit also make me wonder what's going on at her house that she's exhibiting such. Uh, extreme behavior like that i would uh ask those parents a few questions man because that that is that is not typical that is anti-social behavior uh yeah that's horrible man it's scary 
it was like upstairs uh, and that's how like the night ended. So now we're caught up to when everything went public when Mason posted his tweet. Since everything was brought to social media, multiple guys came out to me and said that Sienna did similar things to them. And basically, I'm sh I'll show the text right now. I asked all of them for permission to post, crossed out all their names. We don't want her to hurt anybody else. We don't want anyone to go through that experience. At the time, it feels humiliating. You feel like you have no power, you have no no control in the situation, you just, you feel, it's, I don't know, it's just, it's horrible. I just want to start off by saying that I didn't stay silent in the situation over these last couple months. I, I talked to my friends, my family, my parents, counselors, and I was able to process everything. I don't think I'll ever be the same person I was before Sienna. It, it sucks and there's going to be people that try to take advantage of you and get you at your most vulnerable state and and that's that's not fair that's not fair at all and it's a lot of the time it's usually like the nice the nice people that like let people walk all over them and that was me like I let everyone yeah, I mean, my, my initial reaction to all this is that very mature response. The fact that he took the time to talk with his parents, counselors, friends, because he really didn't comment on this whole situation for months. This whole new thing broke out months ago. And um, it really shows that he put a lot of thought into before making this video or saying anything about it, but... The fact that she's actually doing this to other people, too, is, I don't know. I think she might be a menace if all of this is true, you know? I mean, uh, there needs to be an intervention with this with this girl. And right now, she is denying everything. And a lot of friends and public figures are running defense for her. Um, really big names, you know, like Tana Mongu, uh, Dave Porkboy. The, the, uh, simply because... She, you know, she's a woman and he's a guy. Like he said, I think the humiliation aspect really drives a lot of these feelings to feel like you're embarrassed. Like, this is a woman. I'm a man. I should be able to protect myself. It's humil. What, what am I going to complain that this girl's trying to come on to me? It's, you know, it's you doubt your own feelings. Like, I feel like this is wrong. It makes me feel horrible. But uh, people are going to judge me. For talking to them about this. Um, <sighs> yeah, I mean, if she was a man, she'd be in jail. She'd be done, dude. Or she'd or or on the other hand, you know, there could be James Charles. Well, James, nobody cares that James Charles does it. Is that because it's a man on man crime? Um God, people just have a lot of they cut a, they be cutting a lot of slack for for essayists lately, man. Um especially when people pr have a proven track record of doing this to people like not an isolated incident. For example, what he showed Sienna Mays doing it to many guys. James Charles doing it to many 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 young men and boys. Uh, these, this is the problem. This, this is something that we need to intervene with. Um, and it's not just when dudes, men do it to women. As of Sienna, I don't know if she'll ever be sorry. I don't know if she'll ever learn from what she did or she'll ever admit to what she did. Um, but I just don't want her to do this to other people. If you've been through a similar situation as me, I encourage you just to speak out. Speak out to anyone. And trust me, it, it helps so much. And I just wanted to say thank you so much for listening to me and letting me take time and breathe and process everything. Yeah, so overall, I think he did a good job defending himself, explaining himself, bringing awareness to, you know, men who are victims.
because this stuff happens, right? We, I think men are probably much less likely to report something like this, to talk about something like this. They probably are more likely to downplay it, to keep it to themselves. Um, again, not, not to, I'm not trying to minimize women who, who this happens to at all, but I do think it's a, it's a, a great look into the men, um, the men's experience into, you know, uh, being, being the victim of this. Yeah. So, you know, I think it's just important to be aware that everybody I'm, goes through this. I just this, want to say you're right? feeling. This is, um, everybody goes through this. I think we all need to be very mindful. You know, crimes of this nature are just so damaging. They're so, they have such big impacts on the victim's life. Um, and people, if what they're saying about Sienna May is true, she sounds like dangerous. So we got to keep the same energy, right, guys? Uh, anyway, peace and love. You know, make sure your friends and family are okay. Keep an eye on your people. And remember that this can happen to anyone regardless of gender. God bless. Stay good.